Welcome to Create Momentum Podcast for Positive Mindset. Today, my guest is Wakar Malik. Wakar Malik is from Canada and he's a singer. Wakar, I'm really thankful and grateful to you that you have taken a time out from your busy schedule. So how are you and you're looking forward to a weekend? Yeah, thank you so much. Pleasure's all mine. Thank you for giving me the opportunity. Uh, but of course, yeah, finally the sun is out, so we're super excited. It's cold, but we like the sunny feel from our windows. <laughs> yeah, similar as here, it was a little bit snowfall in uh, England, but uh, mm. now the sun is good and um, the time, uh, maybe it's the right time or a good time, you can say. So mm -hmm. my first question is to you, uh, Wakar. Please tell me about yourself and tell me how did your singing journey started? Sure, sure, no problem. So we, um, I've been in the acting and film world for a long time. I've been producing for a long time. And around six, seven years ago, I said, you know, it's time I come in front of the camera. I always had the passion to, to be able to perform. And uh, so we, me and my friends, we started YouTube. We were one of the pioneers of starting YouTube, especially in the Pakistani side with me, Sham, some of our friends got together. And so a lot of fame started coming from YouTube. And we started touring. I used to always sing just for fun. It wasn't something I thought I would become a big singer. I'm not even going to call myself a big singer. A big singer is Rahad Bhai or Ali, Zafar, you know, Bilal. They're singer singers. Uh, I would call myself more of a performer. But what happened was I specifically remember this day. Uh, we had to fill an hour slot in our tours. Now, as a YouTuber, what do you do for an hour? You can entertain people for 15 minutes, talk to Ben. For, what do you do for the rest half an hour? So we said, why don't we start singing and just performing and make people have a good time? Uh, so from there, we just started doing that. And then I remember this one, um, one tour in Trinidad and Tobago. And funny enough, in a small island, we didn't expect a lot of people, but there was over, I think, 3,000 people that came there. We were shocked. It felt like we were somebody that day. And when we were performing the music, the energy that we get from the crowd when, you, when you're performing on stage, especially the music, when they can dance with you, when they're just feeling the vibe, that energy, I never got from anything else. I mean, uh, doing acting for movies or speaking on conferences, whatever it may be, that high that you get was so great. Uh, the initial feedback, I just, it just hit me. And I said, you know what, from now on, I need to start singing. So there I really took my singing journey seriously and I started working on my own tracks and trying to bring my own flavor to music. Yeah, that's a great yeah. thing. So what attracted to, uh, to you uh, towards singing and who inspired you in a singing world? Yeah, you know what? I'm a child world of uh, music. I'm, I'm, my point is I love all kinds of music all over the world. I love reggae music. I love our Pakistani uh, Indian classical music. You know, I, I love the reggaeton, the Spanish. I was born and raised and moved around quite a bit. Since, uh, since I was a kid, I was born in Kuwait. I lived in the U.S., lived in the U.K., uh, live here now. Uh, in Canada, you have all sorts of friends. I have Spanish friends, and I have, you know, like black friends, Jamaican friends, everybody. So um, I wanted to bring a lot of the international flavor of music that I grew up listening to and bring it towards the Pakistani side to kind of fusion uh, music. And I thought that could be my unique identity. So that kind of fuels my my drive of always hitting my creativity of blending the two together. Like my last song called Gulabi, we took um, Gulabi Akia, a good song, and we mixed it with a bit of dancehall music, which I think is the next wave coming up. I tried to bring that mesh and that people liked it. So my inspiration, my feel comes from uh, me trying to colliding the worlds together, you know? Of yeah. course, of course. Uh, you uh, have lived quite a few different places. So which country do you like? Is it England or Kuwait or uh, UK? Oh, that's, you know, I get that a lot. I'll be honest with you. Every country had this, had its own beauty. I love UK for its own things, except the rain so much, you know. Uh, but uh, US was high school. Uh, I was born in Kuwait. So everyone, every place has its own little beautiful thing to me. But I really think when it comes to living, and I've traveled pretty much most of the world, uh, uh, I think the best place that I would want to live in and can raise a family and can be completely happy and not be bored, I think it's Canada. The type of weathers we get, 
the type of culture we have around us, so much ethnicities, so so much to do. I think Canada is home. I like it here, yeah. Yeah, of course. I've been to uh, Canada in 2015 and 2017. I love yeah. especially the Tim Hortons. Tim Hortons yeah, yeah. is my favorite. <laughs> Whenever I get a chance, yeah. I'll uh, grab a double-double and yeah, yeah, some yeah. Timbits. So that's what I do. So yeah, we're very, very addicted to it. Yeah, so in uh, in future, are you planning to collaborate with uh, international artists? Yeah, I'm, I'm actually in the works now. Unfortunately, COVID really delayed a lot of my processes. I took a three-year break because I was shooting a couple of films, but I wanted to come back, come back strong. So I've been prepping for music for a long time. Um, so I have a lot of big collaborations lined up. Unfortunately, we were supposed to release last year, uh, but we delayed everything, seeing what the cultural climate will be for music in the next year. Um, and now since COVID is kind of becoming a norm, so now we're starting to come with those collaborations and we have our own marketing plans on how we're going to launch this music. So I have a big collaboration coming up very soon. Next, I can't disclose the name right now, but you'll know in a week or so. Um, but we have a big collaboration in three weeks. Uh, it's for my third song. And my third song is a trilogy. My first two songs were a part one, part two of a story. This will be the end of the story, the part three. And the collaborations is with a big, big, big singer right now in Pakistan. And then I have a couple other mores coming up. Um, so yeah, in the next, uh, af well, after this, Ramadan will come. So two, two and a half months after, you'll see a lot more collaborations. Yeah. Okay. Uh, you know, when you start uh, any career, you, you face mm -hmm. a lot of challenges and difficulties. And yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, in the beginning, you have to go like uh, me when I started podcast. And even though now, if I send a sure. message to Instagram or Facebook, so a lot of people, they say, uh, you know, different reason. People have different sure. reasons not to come yeah. to the podcast. Yeah, so yeah. what difficulties and what challenges you have gone through in this uh, singing uh, occupation, you can say, or a profession? Right, right. I think the biggest challenge, uh, the two challenges I had is one is I blame myself for, I think this is a big one for a lot of people. Uh, in the last five, six years, everybody wants to be a singer. Everybody wants to get fame. Everybody wants to come out and live that social media life. And we don't credit the art as much as we should because we think with technology now, anyone can sing. It's easy. And I was one of those guys. I say, you know, Makar, I sing okay and I sound okay and I should be okay. When you go and sing and you're not on key and you're not on scale and the computer doesn't recognize your voice properly and the poor audio engineer has to fix so much, you realize you're so far away from the game. And I and I got a really good Ustadji. I had some really good mentors, uh, Farooq Bhai, like legends from Pakistan, good mentors. Thompson now coaches me quite a bit. They're like brothers. They made me understand what true music was. And then I started actually learning the art of music and learning the vocal coaching, the vocal practices. I think that really started, and I, I still think up 2% compared to the 100%, because it's so hard. It's not easy. When people, the hardship you say, when you have to sit there for two hours and do the same thing again and again, again and again, again and again, it just becomes a nuisance, you know? And then you fall, you, fall, yeah, you um, feel sleepy. And the funny thing is when your vocal cords are vibrating, it gives you the uh, feeling of want to go to sleep. Um, so you had to go to getting used to all that process and really understanding how big of a world music is and which we don't see as an outsider. I think that was a big challenge, but I'm getting my groove into it now. Second, I think was, and this is a very big one as well, is finding the right team to build music with. Unfortunately, there's, um, there's ways that people work in different countries. Um, and it took me a really long time, spent a lot of money, wasted a lot of money. Uh, bad relationships, good relations to really finally be able to find a good team uh, that has the same passion as me, understands my vision, and then is able to deliver on the time and not just about money, money, money. They're about the art itself. That was very hard to do. It took me a long time to figure that out. I believe one thing. A lot of the time we look for perfection. We don't, uh, I mean, yeah. a lot of the time we don't seek for progress, you know, progress yeah. day by day, it can take you in a different level. I seek for progress every day. When I started, I, hopefully you see my first interview, it was not like that. Yeah. I was so confident and talking like that. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. for me is progress. I always, maybe yeah. there are glitches, there are mistakes. Right. I said, no problem. I did. I'll come yeah. next time better. 
Right, right, right. So no, for sure, what... that's how it should be. You know? Okay, that's really great. Uh, what is the level of success you are seeking in singing career? Um, you know, I'm really doing it as passion right now. Um, my main goal, my main career is my acting. I would say I'm I'm far more of a better actor than I am as a singer. But singing for me, it's something that satisfies my soul, especially touring. I really started singing because I wanted to tour more. That one-on-one -on -one connection that I had with people when I'm touring just fueled me, just gave me that, mm, you know? So, and that resonated towards my acting, that resonated towards my life. Um, I'm a people's guy. I want to connect with people and music just did that to me. So I'm sure music will go forever. Um, what directions I'm going to take, I really don't know. It just wherever my creativity goes. Music is something I'm not letting the business influence a lot more. Music is something I'm doing to what comes from me. Um, so I think um, it's, it's a long-term effect for me, but it will go side and side with my acting career on depending on what, what I feel like producing or what, what music I feel like making throughout the years. Yeah. But definitely a track every two months, 100%. Yeah. Thank you. Wakar, one thing I want to say to you, success mm -hmm. and happiness be always with you. That's my prayer for you. And you should touch the level of success you, uh, you ever imagined. I said you should be very successful. Inshallah. I appreciate it. Inshallah. Inshallah. Uh, all, of all, of, <laughs> all of us. So yeah, we, exactly. go, we go to our wrap-up section now. So sure. the last few questions. So what drives you every day and what makes you happy? Good question. You know what? Um, God, what drives me every day? You know, um, let me think about this one. I'll tell you, um, the last couple of years, I went through a bit of a spiritual journey. And I'm going to say I'm not the same cat that I used to be. I was this kind of guy who was about money, 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 and hunger, 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 and go, 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 go. I think the more I'm coming toward artistry, my life is becoming a little bit different where it's not the money that drives me anymore. I think it's what I deliver to the world and the art that drives me anymore. So I think what I really want to do is make an impact. What I want to do is bring a change in someone's life. I want to leave this place knowing that I made an impact. Uh, for example, now on my social media, behind the scenes for years, I've been coaching men and just giving them advice anywhere from relationships to fashion, all that stuff. But I'm going to really take a big turn on my social media and focus a lot more towards making men better, like a men 2.0, you know? Um, and so this is a point that I really wanted to emphasize on is I think nowadays there's so much confusion. I see a lot of mental issues with men. No one takes care of us as much as we should, you know? Like we don't take care of us as much. So I think we really need to have each other's back. And there's certain experiences we all learn from our life. And I think I want to give that back to my fellow men, especially the young guys. I see them, they're so confused when they message me. They don't have a direction in life. They don't have the motivation. They don't have a clear vision of what they want to do. So um, my music, my movies, my own self, what I say, I wanted to make an impact and definitely want to make my men better, you know, and more confident so then they can, They're all good in their own way that they can really be the best of themselves. So I think that kind of drives me daily. Uh, and then internally, honestly, who doesn't want to be successful? I'm not going to lie. I want to be famous. I want to be successful, you know, and uh, not for the fame, but Rock said something really cool. He said, when I was in, when I was in wrestling, he said, uh, and I'll tell you right now, Rock, Will Smith, Kevin Hart, three men, like I'm just, you know, zoned into them. Right. And Rock said that when I was in wrestling, I impacted millions. And, but when he said, now I'm in movies and why I came to movies is because now I can impact billions, you know? And I said, what a beautiful thing to say. So if you have the talent or the avenue or then, then do something to make an impact, man. What, what is life about if you don't give, you know, because you get 10 back and, and it's happiness all over. Right. So I think that's what drives me daily. Yeah. Yes, you are, yeah. of course, you're, you're right about the mental health issue you said. You know, um, it could be anything you are going through. It could, like, you know, some, sometimes different things happen to, in your life. But, you know, when you are going through mental issues or yeah. uh, you're going on a hardship because you don't want to talk uh, with anybody, you don't want to share yeah. because when you are going to mental yeah. stress, 
You don't want to see yeah. anybody. You you are in yeah. a darkness. So I have spoken yeah, yeah. with a few people uh, on my podcast about this mm. um, mental health and depression issue. It is very mm. hard. But again, uh, it is only you will take yourself mm -hmm. uh, to the height of the sky or to the mm -hmm. downfall. That's mm -hmm. what I can see it, but different pe people see it in a different way. Okay, what advice will you give to younger generation that could mm -hmm. impact one advice if, if you want to give it to them? What advice that it will be? Um, interesting. You know what I've noticed? I'm going to keep it around our field, right? What I've noticed is everybody wants quick fame. Everybody wants quick results. I'll get a kid sending me a message saying, Mukarbai, can you please give me a shout out? Uh, because I want that boost. I want that followership. The problem is, is until you don't go through the process in refining your craft, you getting that boost or that shout out is still not going to help, right? When someone comes to you, they don't see something that you're delivering. They're never going to stick around, right? So my point to is whatever you do, do what makes you happy, what you're passionate about, no matter what field it is, because now there's money in every field. You don't have to be a doctor or engineer, but put your hard work in as learn everything you can about that craft, about that field, about that performance and give and put it out there. And the right people will recognize you. They will give you an opportunity, especially now. So make sure that you put the hard work in before you ask for favors or before you ask for any handouts even if it's a mentor that you're looking for, learn your craft, do your homework, get yourself so solid that we want to go out of our way and do something for you or anybody, even a business mentor. So my advice is that you put in the work, don't look for shortcuts. And I think uh, enjoy the journey more than just the end result, you know? Yeah, of course, you're right. But the problem is nowadays today, Everybody see view, want to see the viewers. Nobody is focusing on quality. They say, okay, mm -hmm. that if you have 400, uh, let's say there is 7.7 .7 billion people out there. Mm -hmm. Out of them, mm -hmm. if, if let's say 10,000 people watch your content, it's still there mm -hmm. is something. Mm -hmm. So it, it's people should think not for the quantity, the quality. Yeah. They should work on yeah. the quality. So sure, that yeah, is yeah. that that is the problem, and everybody start from a zero. You know, I started yeah, from yeah. zero. You start exactly. from a zero. Exactly. So, yeah. so that is the thing. I am I am happy if I have six hundred subscriber out of them. Yeah. Still sixty people watch my content every day. You know, I'm Very impacting nice. on some on somebody. Exactly. That's how I think. Exactly, exactly. You know, there is so many alternatives now, right? Um, when we were starting up too, uh, we didn't have as much YouTube content that you have now or TikTok any field that you want to be in, any field. I'm launching a men's skincare line soon. Anything you want to be on, you can learn so much the strategies to get your content out there. If you just YouTube, how to make sure you get the most exposure on YouTube, how to use tags, how to use uh, you know, different platforms. A Clubhouse now is becoming the biggest thing in the world. It's, it's phenomenal how quickly you gain traction there. People don't realize how big TikTok and LinkedIn are these days to get publicity behind your content. So my point is, if you just YouTube how to do X, Y, Z, how to promote your video, how to promote your podcast, you'll be surprised how much content is there that gives you baby steps on how to be able to deliver or get more exposure. So that's the thing, you know, people are looking, the kids now are looking for that quick jump. But if they put the work in, they learn, the foundations are going to be so solid that there's no way whatever you're doing is not going to become a success. It just needs time because there's so much traffic now. But if you stay persistent, you keep on putting content, you're learning all the technical strategies to get your product in front of uh, somebody except 10 people who are not doing that, you'll be surprised how much more organic traffic you're going to get. And it doesn't take more than like 600 subscribers is, is enough. Thousands of subscribers enough. If you have something it will slowly start gaining momentum. It just takes time now because people don't have patience, right? They want quick content within a second, done, move on. But when they start seeing value, they'll start sharing and things will happen, right? So, um, yeah. Really uh, thankful and grateful to you, uh, Wakar. And uh, last question is, any message you right. have for your fan, audience, or family members in Pakistan or all over the world, what message it will be you want to give from your side? 
Oh, man. You know what? Honestly, all I ask is for prayers now uh, is because putting a lot of work in. This is my time to get out there now. A lot of, a lot of phenomenal projects are coming up. So all I can ask is for prayers and your continued support and just, you know, watch me shine and, and, and you all shine with me, you know. So um, that's all. Just press happiness and love. I think, uh, you know, words of Bob Marley too, right? It's all one love and just spread that happiness and be happy, be positive. That's all I can ask for. Wakar, for me, you're already shining. Thank you very much. Thank you, brother. Thank you and so much. I will definitely see you in Canada and we'll have a Tim Harton together. No, 100%. Often. I'm with you. You're a guest here. Okay. Uh -huh. Pleasure.